Are we live? Are we live? Hello replay viewers, welcome in. I'm just going to do a few alterations with the video and then we'll make a start. So this video today is a demonstration video of how to use the mandolin vegetable chopper. So if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. And we'll be doing some demonstrations using some vegetables and potatoes and we're going to make some french fries and i'm going to show you a few other products as well so um i'm just going to give it a minute and then we'll we'll make a start okay so i actually went onto youtube um and i've had this item a couple of weeks now well i'd say about a week two weeks uh, and i've been testing this out and i'm going to show you a demonstration number one of how to put it together I'm going to do a demonstration of how to do different slices. We've got French fries, we can do julienne, we're going to do some dices and show you how to do the dices because there's two different steps to it, okay? So it's, this is not just your typical cooking broadcast video where I'll come on and then I'll do my food, you know, and then it's over. I'm going to show you properly how this works and how this will keep you safe in your kitchen because mandolins are one of i think they were the, the number one voted medical emergency uh, kitchen gadget ever so if you've not got one of these then you can order one the links down below um but the other mandolin slices that you can buy was the number one product that a lot of people were going into uh, the emergency room for in america or you know like if you know, going into hospital and A&E because they were just cutting the hands and and all that. So I'm going to show you how this works. So here we go. I'm just going to give it another minute, actually. Grab yourself a drink because we actually the first thing I need to use, actually, is we're going to peel some carrots. So I've got another gadget here. I've got a, 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 a peeler. This is a peeler. This does julian as well, uh, but I uh, just want it to peel the carrots. So let's do that first and then I will show you the mandolin. So literally it's going to take just two minutes. So this item here is also in the shop. I've pinned it down below if you want to buy one. And this is a metal peeler with two settings. You've got your thin slice and then you do have julienne as well. But I'm just using this for the carrots. So I'm just going to peel these carrots just because I, I don't want skins on my carrots. So let's just peel this. See how easy that is coming off? Just like that. Easy peasy. So I've just got three carrots to do and then we shall show you the mandolin. So hopefully we're all well and we're having a nice day. Let me know if you chop your ends of your carrots off. Okay, so I should say this video is actually for uh, a friend of mine called Melanie. So if you're watching Melanie or you're watching this on a replay, this video is for you. And if you've got any feedback, any suggestions of any of the gadgets that I use that you would like me to demonstrate, then either send me a message, drop me a message. Melanie is one of my Patreon viewers, uh, which I have set up just to provide extra content and videos and on certain products or... Uh, this is a really small carrot, I should say, so... <laughs> It does work and it will work with bigger carrots. Probably bigger carrots are better because, but this just shows you how versatile this mandolin is. And there's other things you can use it for as well. So I will give you, stay tuned, stay with me. Okay, so look at that. That peel has done a really great job. So three carrots there, nicely peeled. Okay, so if you're watching this on YouTube, guys, don't forget to hit the like button. You can follow along, hit the follow button, hit your notification bell so you don't miss out on future broadcasts. You can keep your scraps here if you want to. Um, put them in a stock, make a nice stock to go with any roast dinner or something like that. So I'm going to chop the ends off. And I know I'm using more kitchen stuff here, but it's just so it's easy to... Uh, because when this when, actually when the carrot goes through the mandolin, you don't want any of these roots in your tray. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you how to do, we're going to do a few different 
functions. They're called the functions. So let's put them to one side. So they're out of the way. Let's move that. So as I say, if you want to get the peeler, there's a peeler. There's a link down below in the shop. Uh, this does Julian as well, but we're going to show you how to use Julian on the mandolin. So what is the mandolin then? Let me just shut my window because it's getting a bit breezy in here. Okay. So the mandolin, this is a kitchen gadget. It goes on your work surface. You can slot this down and twist. You might have seen these all over TikTok. So it can easily be stored away. Some of them actually do have a cover for this part. So if you don't have the cover, I don't know. It doesn't really come with the cover, I don't think, in this um, for this if you're going to buy one today or tomorrow, wherever on my shop, um, it won't come with a cover, I don't think. So don't be like thinking, oh, it doesn't come with a cover. I'm missing a part. Maybe I'm missing a part. I'm not sure. So this is the mandolin. So it's nice. So make sure you don't cut your hands if you're going to get one. OK, it's got two little legs. So we pull this out and you must make sure it clicks in place. OK, so it pushes right out just like that. OK, can you all see that, guys? Yep. Yeah. So it's nicely sat on the kitchen surface. Make sure it's nice and flat. OK, it comes with a, a box or a little tray. So this is the box that it comes with. And we're going to spin this round or wh whichever way it's easy for you. You're going to push this through. So it's on a bit of a slant and then put it, push it down so it slots in place just like that. OK, with a handle, we're going to turn it up and watch as at the front. Watch. This is the blade part. This is what we're going to do. It's a bit like a guillotine. So it chops all your vegetables into different sizes, uh, different dices. And this bit here at the front, if you're wondering what this part, this is for garlic. So if you're grating any garlic or you just want that really... I've not used that part yet, I've got to admit. So, But we do have that one on the, on the chopper as well, you know, the vegetable chopper. So... Right, so that's that part. At the back, right, this is where it gets a bit complicated because I've got a few things to tell you. And you're going to see when I show you how it works, how com not, not how complicated it is, but the differences between the cuts. So here at the front, this is your thickness dial. It starts off at one, or so it starts off at zero, and it goes all the way up to eight, okay? So if it goes up to eight, that means your thickness of your vegetable that you're cutting. So if it's chips, potatoes, carrots, this does other things like Brussels sprouts. You can cut those up. Cucumbers. Cucumbers is probably a, a, a big one. Tomatoes, any vegetables and you want a thicker cut. It's all about the thickness. Then you turn it to an eight. So the thicker the the higher the number, the thicker the cut, okay? I've set this at five, and there's a reason for five. It's gonna get a bit complicated as I explain this, but you'll understand. So we're gonna go through each one separately. I'm gonna do the carrots first, and I'm gonna do what's called a julienne. So a julienne is basically thin strips, a bit like when you do stir fries, or you can do it with a manual peeler as well. But this is for julienne. It does julienne, it does dices, and we'll come on to them as well, and rounds uh, and thick chips. So I know you all want to see the chips, but I've just cut the... Uh, in fact, should we do the chips first? Let's let's do the chips first, because I'll show you how... Yeah, we'll start with the chips. So I'm going to get a potato. If you're going to do potatoes, and you've got a big potato, your best, your best cutting it. So... And I should say, right, where, where are we going to put the potato? Where does the potato go in this? Well, we've got a separate part here. It comes with two little, two parts. This is the shoot. This is the shoot. And this is what you use to push the veg through, OK? Don't use your hands because you'll end up injuring yourself. So again, I'll turn that around. Right, see here at the front, there's three lines. We lift this up. And then we line this one up. Make sure we get it on the right way. Can I remember how it goes? Right, so this, this you see this edge part here? It goes in just like that. Okay, so you push it up, slot it on, 
release the, the three things. Is that right? Yeah. And then that locks in place, just like that. Okay. So if you want to remove it, you lift the three dots up. And as you can see, it's just fallen off. But make sure this bit here goes to the bottom. So it lines up with the blades at the bottom. So lift it up, slot it on, and then release the three dots. Push that forward so it's it's locked in place, okay? Right, let's get a potato then. Right, actually, where we, we come up to the next step, we're going to do some French fries. So you might want to get a pen and paper and write this down because there's going to be a bit of information here. I mentioned before about the thickness of your chips. Five is perfect, okay? So it must be, if you're going to do French fries, uh, it needs to be a five or, 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 or higher because you want thicker chips, okay? Um, so a five for the thickness. Right, the second part I'm going to tell you is this. This here is all to do with your dices. Now there's two here. Now don't get confused thinking these are different. You only one of them. Well, there's two. There's two for a reason. It's to make your uh, square cubes much smaller. So you've got they're both the same, but when you put them when when you put them both up, which are the the blades inside, when they're both up, you're getting really small square cubes. Okay. So you only need to turn one of these. And if you look right in the top here, when I turn this, you'll notice. Let's move that off. You'll notice this is going to move. There we go. So watch it in the middle. Did you see it move? And it's now made squares. If I move it back, there's no squares. But if I do both, that's one square. And let's do the other one. And you see how it got smaller? So there we've got nice square cubes. So you only need to have one of them open if you're going to do French fries, okay? Otherwise, they'll be far too thin. So we've changed it to five. We've changed one of these all the way up, all the way around, which brings the blade forward and up. And we've got nice squares. We don't want them too small. That's why we haven't got two, okay? So that's done. We're going to slot this in, okay? And uh, we're going to make some French fries. So let's pop this in action. Are you ready? So I will explain to you other things. So we're going to get one potato. I'm going to put it in here. Like so. See it there? And then just watch what happens when we start to push this through. Let's grab my guard. And it just goes on like that. Are you ready? And as we push it, we're going to bring this mandolin up this part here and push it down. So ready? Three, two, one. There we go, guys. So that was on a five. Let's check out these little chips then. Just make sure they've all come out. That was that was very quick, wasn't it? Look at them, guys. Perfect chips. And we're going to do a few more. So, But I just wanted to show you that's what a five looks like with one of those all the way round where the blades come up. Okay, let's do another. So we're going to get a bigger potato this time. Is it? Let's have a look. Actually, can we do a bigger one? Yeah, we'll do a bigger one. Look at the size of that, guys. Will it fit? Oh, it's not going to fit, so I'll have to get another, get a, a smaller one than that. A minute, guys. We'll go with this one. So we're going to slot this in, and then we're going to do the same thing again. Three, two, one. And there we have it guys, perfect chips. And that is a really good size. So I highly recommend that you turn one of them all the way up and you have the thickness on a five. And there we've got perfect chips. Okay, now I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna give you a general knowledge about chips in general, because I have an air fryer. 
You want to pop these in some water for 30 minutes, allow the starch to come out, drain it off. Then you want to get a towel and dry them so they're really crispy, okay? And then pop them in, spray some oil on them, pop them in the, the air fryer. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it just depends on kind of your own air fryer that you, you might own. And uh, you don't even have to own an air fryer to have one of these. It's just, that's what you get, perfect chips. And they're all even, they'll all cook at the same time. So I'm gonna get these in the Ninja because that's what I have, an air fryer. So I'm gonna pop them in without my potatoes rolling over. So just bear with me one second, guys. All right, I'm gonna put my air fryer on. 200, 20 minutes. Let's get these in the air fryer. I probably could do with a few more chips actually, but. And I'm gonna put a spray of oil on as well. I should say using the oil spritzer that you can again buy in the shop. So I'll spray some of them on. Just one, two sprays. And I'm gonna bypass the preheat and pop them on for 20 minutes. Right, so while those are cooking, I mentioned to you before about julienne. So we're gonna do some julienne carrots next in here. Now, if you want to do julienne, you slot that back on. You want to make sure the vertical blade is up. So make sure one of them is up and you want it on a four or lower. So we're gonna change it to a four. Okay, make sure one of the blades is up which it is. So let's get a carrot and let's do this one. Here we go. Can you all see that okay, guys? Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, would help if I put it in the right way. <laughs> Here we go. So that's the effect we've got with a four. Can you see that, guys? We've got a four. If I turn... If I turn this down even more to a two, let's see what it goes with with a two. So again, a little bit smaller. And you can make, you can actually turn the other dial. And let's try that. So you get even smaller pieces. Let's use the There we go. So I think I prefer that actually, the lowest setting with both of them up. So we went from, we went from that thickness to that thickness. Okay, there's a fly in here for some reason, go away fly. It's probably after that chip. So just to clarify then, if you're doing julienne, the dial has to be lower than five and I would have at least one of the blades up. Okay, if you put two of the blades up, you're gonna get even smaller chunks. Okay, so that's the carrot. Let's do a, right, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pop that into a bowl actually. Okay, let's pop this in here on a plate. It's not long, so we've got nice diced, carrots there we go so that was using a four and a two next thing we're going to make is some potato flats or not potato flats carrot flats so we're going to chop these up into nice thin slices so to do that we need to make sure the mandolin uh, is on a five or above so we change it to a five we're going to make sure the blades are down so change those so both of them are down and then it's just dependent on how thick you want them so let's change it to a we'll do a five first and then we'll do a one on the other okay so this is on a five here we go oh if i do it right away remember to take this out here we go Okay, that's only done it like that because of the thickness of the carrot, and the carrots are pretty small. So let's now change it to a one. 
Again, do the same thing, pop your carrot in. And you're gonna get nice, thin. Oh yeah, these are perfect, guys. Try not to cut your finger. Okay, so we've got nice, thin pieces of carrots. How thin they are, guys. Perfect to freeze or put in your freezer, just like that. The reason that happened was because as the carrot went down, it went on its side. So there was a full carrot and instead of going down like that, it went wee, which caused it to, uh... well, that's a really nice thin piece of carrot there. So that was the five. Doesn't matter about the size of, the, of it, but that's the five in thickness. And then we went right down to a, a one, one and a half. So if you want really thin slices of carrot, mmm, it tastes so good. Now you're probably saying to me, well, it's all right them doing round circles, but I don't want round circles. I want really diced up carrots. You can put all these back through and do it lengthways like that and then cut it back up. Which, but well, we're not going to do it with a carrot. Well, should we do it with the carrots? Let's try. So we're going to put them back through. And this is the same for potatoes. Just get your thin slices of carrot or potatoes or whatever you're wanting to chop up even smaller. And then what you need to do... is make sure both are down so make sure both of the blades are down. Um, yeah, that's for when you're cutting into slices. And then you need to make sure one of them is back to is back on. So make sure that one of the blades is on. Okay. So imagine these are. Well, this will work with anything really. So if you want even smaller chunks, just put it all back through. It can be a bit of time consuming this part, but. We're going to try it for the first time. Obviously make sure they're all lined up, but it will work. Slide it back on. And then push it through. And hopefully this is going to work. <laughs> Here we go. Ah, yeah. I think the most thing is, is make sure you put it back through. If you want diced carrot. Look at that guys, so that'll work with onions, potatoes, if you want potato squares, which we're actually going to do now, I'll show you. It's kind of similar to the julienne what we did, same method really, but okay. Hey Zane, hey Christine, good to see you. So we're just showing you the mandolin today. So we've got their perfect carrots, all that carrot there, look at that, nicely diced up really easy right so i'm going to show you then diced potatoes diced potatoes so we're going to do the same method you want to make your french fries and then you can pop them back through the the mandolin or you can do potato slices now i'm not showing you potato slices yet so let's grab the the, the, the tray I'm just emptying it out because there's loads of carrot in there. But it's fine, don't worry. So we're going to slot this back on. We're now going to do slices. So can anyone remember how to do the slices? Do you remember? Can you remember how to do the slices? So the blades need to be down. Yep. Yeah. So both blades need to be down, a thickness needs to be five, it's really simple. There's a bit of carrot there guys, it can get stuck so, but we're going to do some slices so we pop that through, watch the tray at the bottom, push this down, always protect your hands. So this is the five, and there we go, we've got nice thin slices of potatoes, just like that. That's a five, remember, so if you want them any thicker, make sure you 
turn it up and we're going to pop these back through well there's two more there so what we do is we slot them all back through can anyone remember the next step we need to make sure one of them is turned on so lift one of the blades up and the last thing to do what's the last thing we need to do I think that's good actually is that good one is back up the thickness how thick do you want them and the thickness needs to be back to five or back to how it was so it's fine with a five five or above above for thicker slices yeah make sure as long as you have one of the blades up so let's pop these through let's get rid of these carrots actually otherwise we'll end up having potatoes and carrots in the pan so here we go push it you gotta really push it so look at that guys nice potato squares just like that so that is there's a reason the reason for coming on doing this video is because a lot of people don't know the correct settings and how to work it so I'll go for that one more time then so if you're doing french fries the dial nose is that needs to be on five for the level of thickness make sure that all of it make sure one of the blades is up if you're doing julienne it needs to be four or lower with both the blades up for really small cubes and then if you're doing dicing do them as normal french fries or slices like we did and then put them back through with with both the blades up was it both the blades or as long as one of the blades is up yeah i think one of the blades is better it just depends on how thin you want the potatoes so there we have it guys nice we're going to cook these off shortly as well in, a, in the pan so do stay with me and then we're going to i'm going to show you the recipe right should we check on the french fries so has anyone got any questions about this mandolin if you want to buy it the link's down below uh let me just check something yep yeah. so if you do want to buy one if you if you've got any questions at all let me know in the comments down below and um I'm just going to check on these french fries so hopefully you enjoyed the demonstration oh the, the french fries are looking good guys i'm just going to give it another i'm going to give it another two minutes and while i do that i'm just going to put some of my things away like the potatoes because the next thing i'm going to show you is how to do some garlic and buttery potatoes so i might have to bring you across yeah i'm going to bring you across guys just going to bring you across pop you up here okay there you go back in the normal position so what i'm going to do now is we're going to use them potatoes in this pan so i'll spin you down so you saw me the other day make omelettes using this or it was eggs and pancakes so we're going to switch this on i'm going to add a little bit of oil to this i think two is enough get a little brush hi alexis good to see you so we've just been doing the mandolin so i'll put this on youtube so you can see we're going to add a little bit of oil in here okay and then we're going to add in some of those diced potatoes once that heats up okay let's check the french fries oh they look so good guys oh yeah so right at the beginning of the broadcast we did some french fries using the mandolin and here are the french fries so you could be having these yourself at home let me know what you prefer oh they just look so good obviously if you've got an air fryer then it does help but you can pop them in the oven so they get nice and crispy or and these would be extra crispy as well if if i did put them in some water and but what do we think guys for the french fries a little bit of salt on them what do we think so let's get some uh, 
I've got a little bit of salt on here. So just to recap, just for Alexis or anyone that's just joining, so we've just made these French fries using the mandolin. We did some julienne carrots, and I showed you two different ways you could do it um, with the settings, because it can be confusing if you're not quite sure what what works. If you if you do buy one and you're a bit stuck, then drop me a message and I will I'll try my best to help you with it. But it's just knowing that number five is probably the best thickness for your chips and wedges. Uh, if you want in thinner cubes, make sure you bring both of the blades up. If you want them extra small, one blade's enough. Uh, you know, to bring one of the blades up so you get squares. Um, the other thing is the... Oh yeah, to put them back through. You must make sure if you do... I think you're better doing... Uh, slices so rounds and then putting them back through rather than thin strips so let's have a little taste of one of these fries then cheers everyone mmm oh my goodness yeah these are good let's have a little bit of tomato ketchup on although I do love these are better than the takeaway ones guys these are so good cheers everybody right that pan's heating up so I'm gonna do some of these wedges with some uh, garlic and butter so let's put a little taste of this. Yeah, these are good. I know Alexis would like these. <laughs> really tasty. Mmm. Yeah, really nice. Right, let's bring you down then. I'm going to bring you down. And we're going to make these. So this is nice and hot. Do we use a spoon? Let's get a spoon in here. We're just going to add... Some of these potatoes. I'm just gonna add some of them have got a bit of carrot in there. We could add a bit of carrot. Just like that. That might be too many, but this just gives you an idea of another recipe to do in this pan. Alright, I'm gonna add a spray of oil. Another spray of oil. Like that. And we're also gonna add a little bit of butter and some garlic. Oh, actually, I've got some onions in here as well. Let's have some onions. I actually used the dicer. Probably should have done. In fact, let's do the onions. I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to put some onions in here as well. So don't, don't just think you use it for uh, pancakes. You can use it for onions. Should we do some fried carrots in this as well? So some of that julienne carrot. Get some of them in there as well. There we go. Otherwise that might just end up going all over the place. Hi Scarlett, good to see you. Right, so we've got in here then, all these are all diced using the mandolin. Carrots, onions and potatoes. And the french fries. So has anyone got any questions? Any questions at regarding the mandolin if you're also watching this on youtube on the replay you can drop me a message as well i can't guarantee the price is going to stay the same um the price may drop the price may go up but i shall be able to give you a correct price if you do get into contact or you can click the book the the little shop icon down below you can find this pan as well I know a lot of you have been interested in the pan, so let's, let me just add the pan on here because I didn't do that. Oh, and I had a delivery as well, guys, today. I will show you in just a second. <laughs> you might have already seen it. So the pan's currently $13.99 and the mandolin is $22.99, for those wondering. So these are really good French fries, everyone. Yum, yum, yum. So, yeah, just going to let these cook away. And uh, I'm going to finish eating these chips. Mmm. Sorry guys, it's too nice. Now there is one of that, them chips are really nice. Really, really nice. Now right, let's just get a, I don't actually have a silicon. Like this is a, mainly for a cake. So 
It's the best thing I've got at the moment. I'm just trying to think. So you can do pancakes in here. You can do omelettes. You can do crumpets. Make your own crumpets, which we're, we're going to have another go at. Um, then pancakes were really nice. Yeah, you can make anything in anything in a pan if you just want something really small. Smells really good. If you've got any suggestions, pop them in the comments down below. You can do like your fillings for your meat. It smells really good in this kitchen. Mm. Right, do you want to see, guys? Do you want to see what I got today? So, uh, Christine says, can you bake in it? I think you can. Well, the handle comes off, Christine, so you can then put that into, into like an air fryer. I'm guessing um, or into the oven so because it does withhold temperatures of up to like I think like 450 degrees um, but I will let me just there's, there's information in the book in the box below if you can see it but I will definitely let you know but right, let me go and show you what I got today although you might not be you'll have to come with me actually to do this cooking so just come with me a second <laughs> are you ready guys i want you to go and put some music on because while that's cooking we're going to go into a dark space are you ready guys ignore the mess here we go three two one here we go legend in a nightclub silent disco See myself in the background, there we go. We're partying guys. Next one. Which one, which colour do you prefer guys? Let me know in the comments. Here's another one. There we go, we're raving now. If you've got epilepsy, I suggest you look away. I should have given you that warning before. Here's the next one. Imagine if you're just in a nightclub or in a club and you just the glasses are just floating around. <laughs> there we go guys, so that is it. They are the vase the uh technology glasses. Oh I better check on this pan, it smells good. So yeah, what do you think guys? If you want some of these, there's a I don't think I've put the link down below, but I'll uh, add it if, if you're interested. Right, so I'm gonna put you back up here. There we go. Right, I'm gonna spin you down because the food is looking good. I can zoom in as well. One minute, guys. Sorry about this. Do, do, do. Right, let's just turn this around. Oh yeah, these smell really good. Oh, I was gonna put some garlic and butter in them. Let me put some garlic and butter. We've got a teaspoon in. Oops. Can you see me guys? What is going on? Let's go back. Sorry, we'll leave it like that guys because you cannot see me otherwise. Right, a little bit of butter. Oh yeah. Mm. Garlic and buttery potatoes. Do that one as well. Can you all see that everyone? Look at them. Look at them guys. This pan is amazing. Nice crispy.
You could do an egg in here as well, at the same time. So I'm not too bothered about, you can't really like fry carrot. Well you can, but it's going to take a while. But these look so nice. Getting a nice crispy edge. Onions smell so good. Okay, has anyone got any questions at all? Could be good for tartlets. Yes, Christine, that's a brilliant idea. So yeah, if you want to do tartlets, definitely uh, you can use it for that. I'm just going to tidy up while I uh, while that while that's cooking. So yeah, if you want the mandolin, guys, then this is how it looks, and it's really easy to put away. It's really easy to clean, I should say. So if you're wondering, well. I don't have any, the space for it. Well, the legs come down like that. You push this down. You twist. Whoops. Do it from. Twist it so it locks in place like that. It, it goes in the dishwasher as well. We're going to lift this off. Be careful about that. And there we go. So it's really, really light. Spin you back down. So how are you Christine? How is Switzerland? I've got to be honest, I don't really cook potatoes in a pan, but I do have a soft spot for garlic and buttery potatoes. In fact, I don't have any garlic guys. Yeah, I've run out of garlic. So we can't do garlic potatoes, but we can have buttery ones. And onions looking good. Maybe add a little bit of salt and pepper in here. Okay. I'm going to finish off them chips. These French fries before they go cold. Oh yeah. So yeah, if you've got any questions, best thing you could do is just message me and I will get in touch with you. Mm. So I think that's it, guys. So thank you all for coming in. How's the UK treating us? It's not bad, uh, Christine, it's not bad. <laughs> now, Christine lives in a beautiful part of the world. And uh, same qu as Christine used to do a lot of broadcast, of travel broadcast around her area in Switzerland. And it's a beautiful area. So please make sure you're following Zen Squad. And um, yes, we miss your broadcast, Christine. I can't get how good these are. Mm. You know what it's like when you're at McDonald's and you're munching away on the chips. Mm. So thank you all for coming in guys, I shall see you maybe tonight, might be tomorrow, but yeah let's have a little eased potato, the only problem with potatoes in a pan they do take a little longer to cook so, so there we go, thank you all for coming in guys and hopefully that you found that demonstration useful and I'll put it on, this will be on YouTube so Thank you for watching on YouTube. Do hit the follow button, subscribe. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not actually allowed to mention that. <laughs> I should say, that's probably why. Um, well, so yeah, follow me on TikTok. Make sure you're on TikTok. Follow me there as well. So thank you for watching, guys. And I'll see you, see you next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye.